up and welcome back to another episode of The Let Out. I'm so excited to be here with a good friend of mine, Obio. <laughs> Obio, tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do. So I'm Obio. I'm an LGBTQ advocate. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a certified life coach. Stop playing Indeed. with me. You know? I saw that. I see you too. <laughs> Take it, clients. Um, <laughs> And yeah, that's about me. That's me. Okay. <laughs> well, you also have Create Space. That's on your hat. Tell people about Create Space. So Create Space was kind of just like a saying, I would say, honestly, but then it turned into a brand. Mm-hmm. And so shirts, hats, all the things, but it's more about you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like creating space for yourself and others. Mm-hmm. Okay, fantastic. We're going to get into that a little bit later, but yeah. I definitely want to hop in to, the, to today's topic. Yeah. Now, last week, when I was... <laughs> Lene, Lene, Lene. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Last week I texted you on Thursday night when I started the doc mm-hmm. because I'll say when I seen Nishi, Nishi Nash talking about it I was like oh for sure I'm gonna support my sis I'm gonna watch it I've heard Jeffrey Dahmer I don't know exactly what he did but literally what came out of her mouth when I saw the preview was like y'all know Jeffrey Dahmer was eating black people and I was like what so I knew it was something for me to dive into because I knew it was either something about a hate crime systemic injustice but honestly watching it I could have never fathomed the totality of what his particular case was and his victims. But anyway, I texted you and I said, go ahead and watch this docu-series. Yes. Because that's what we're talking about next week. Now, did you plan to watch it no. prior to me texting No. Okay. I was not going to watch it. I, did I force you? You did. I, but it's okay. You okay. Know what I'm so how did you feel about it? How did you feel about it? About the entire series? Yeah, just give me a review. Like, I mean, it's receiving a lot of critique right now, <laughs> mm-hmm. but definitely as someone who is a part of, I have my own feelings as somebody who's black, yeah. but someone who's black and queer, I would love to know your take on. Yeah. I thought the the racism was clear, okay. if I'm being honest, mm-hmm. um, because I think even from in hindsight, I was thinking about the series and I was thinking about how often when he would, you know, kill white people, it was centered around this accident, right? I didn't mean to, mm-hmm. right? But when he was killing these black bodies, it was very purposeful. Mm-hmm. There was no remorse. There was no, I didn't mean to, you know, he hit the guy over the head and the guy died and he was trying to get them back to life almost right mm. but every black person felt very intentional um and so that was a a big highlight for me in the way the story was told mm-hmm. um but also it wasn't new to be fair mm-hmm. i'm a gay black man in, in america right mm-hmm. it wasn't new at all for me and so <clears throat> the, you said that you said they've been targeting gay black boys because i was trying to give you a trigger warning about the opening scene and i won't give you no spoilers because it was yeah. just a lot yeah ryan murphy might have a problem <laughs> but what did you mean like that's not new you can't trigger warning a black gay man in my opinion mm. My my existence has been a trigger warning. Mm. You know, me finding my freedom was a trigger warning. You know what wow. I mean? And so me being a confident gay identified man and, mm-hmm. and black, you know, yeah. double marginalizes, man, please. That, yeah. that, that trigger warning, blah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> so, I mean, what I did get from the series was, it was very interesting because I did not even think about it that way, but you're absolutely right. I was thinking about it as a matter of circumstance, like when he was in Bath, Ohio with his family, it was nothing about but white boys running around and those were bound to be his victims until he moved into a place where it was just prime for him to be able to victimize people who nobody was looking for. Yeah. You know, so that, that was my overall thought about it, but it has been receiving a lot of flag for the way it was done. People have said, Ryan Murphy romanticized these murders. And I feel like that's a really interesting thought. What do you think? Facts. Romanticize is interesting. Sensationalize. But to... I, I'm, I'm going romanticize low-key. Just because I think and also like romanticizing him as a person. Mm-hmm. Right? Like mm-hmm. even the ending and how they want us to pity him. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, don't, I don't really have much pity to be fair. Yeah. I, I Not even <laughs> trying to play devil's advocate the series itself and the way Evan Peters, and maybe it's because I have sympathy for Evan Peters because I honestly think something's wrong, baby. And if you need somebody to come get you, (laughs) let me know. I will come, we'll put you up in somebody's rehab somewhere so you can get away from that man. But um, maybe that's what it is. But I did feel the way that it was done, I'm a a big proponent for art being used to educate. The way that it was done, I felt like kind of roped you in and made you feel more than you would feel with a, doc, with a regular documentary dub, but I think it made you have more empathy for the victims, in my opinion, because it painted them as people. It painted them like literally they were victims of something horrible and traumatic, and I felt like you could really 
see the, just the other side of it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Now, the show did also get flack for not communicating with all the families they portrayed. Yeah. And I may have an unpopular opinion about that. Which is? Uh huh. I have to say it carefully. Because what I do take issue with is that these families were not compensated. Mm-hmm. If you're making money off this film, using people's likeness in their stories, they need to be making money. They need to be compensated. Not even that they need to be making money as if they want to capitalize off their own trauma, but they need to be compensated for, even if they don't choose to watch it, it now being in the ether, people talking about them having to relive it again. Because I couldn't imagine having been through it or been a family member the first time. But in situations like this, where there is a message to be shared that is, and I mean absolutely no offense, but that is bigger than the people it immediately affected, it's huge for them absolutely but it has implications for the surrounding world yeah do you think that there needs to, do, do you think that getting the family's permission was necessary to create this i see what you're saying like it's not just their story right i don't know that their permission was necessary but i i would i would think as just a good person you would give them some heads up you would send them mm-hmm. something you know you would do something in honor of them because it is so specific mm-hmm. intentional for them but i think to your point it does affect people around them and i also want to make this point if i can the way the story was told was as if white people don't exist in black spaces mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and being a person who's been to his fair share of gay clubs like the gay scene is not vast right like it's not like a bunch of gay clubs in in these cities so a lot of times when you find cities with gay bars in them all of it is kind of in this radius right like the black ones over here and the white ones over here but it's not hard to find them Mm -hmm. so it wasn't like he was just in an area where there was only black people and he just couldn't find white people i don't want to create that narrative right you could have found some white gays right so we're we're making it almost seem as though he didn't have any choice but to target Mm -hmm. black and brown Mm -hmm. bodies but he could have chose other people and i think it was it's very interesting how this story again was told right we act like well, he just only had blacks, guys. He wasn't, he wasn't racist. He just only, I mean, what are you going to do if you only live No, bro. Like, there's so many other races of people that he could have targeted, but he chose to do that one. So I think in all in all, like, families compensated, sure. But also, like, again, it affects so many people. Nishi Nash, who was her character, come on, give me a name, Cleveland. Linda Cleveland. Sorry, what's up, Linda? Well, rest <laughs> in peace, Glenda. But, yeah. you know, strong woman, right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't part of the queer community, but it affected her. Yeah. Yeah. And this story may not be A to A for people, but it affects all of us in so many ways because she wasn't part of the community, but she had to be um, affected by this man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I saw a bunch of people saying, like, why didn't she move? That's not a luxury everybody has. Exactly. <laughs> like, people aren't necessarily living in a place because I actually saw, randomly, I saw a TikTok thread, like a whole playlist of interviews with people who live in the apartment complex. Actually, Linda Cleveland's niece, who was the first person to see that young Asian boy and call the police. Um, well, nobody lived there because they wanted to. It was a drug city. The man was talking about you could find bags of crack on the street, dealers everywhere, like police weren't coming around. You let you lived there because you had to. You lived there because you had to. You didn't have any other options. Even when people were being put out, I think they were given some sort of like stipend mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. moving expenses, but it's difficult to be displaced. And also, when all you have is fear and suspicion of what might be going on next door and no confirmation because no one's listening to you, do you uproot your entire life because people are gaslighting you to make you think you're crazy? Yeah. We can go, can't we? We can. That was it for me. Yeah. <laughs> but that's real <laughs> life. Like, oh, like, let me just, oh, it's, a, it's, it's some suspicion. Let me move to a high rise. Like, that's not how life works. That's not how life works at all. So the next thing that I want to discuss, another reason people are upset about the film, is that Netflix tagged it under the LGBTQIA section. Mm-hmm. And I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. Like, why would we want someone to terrorize queer people living their truth mm-hmm. in a time where he couldn't, where he only used his truth to get out of trouble? Mm-hmm. Hello? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Why would we associate that with other content that is supposed to be representative and liberating and creating space, you know? So, what do you think? He was also queer. It's clear. He was gay. Yeah. Should he not be in the mix? I don't think it should be in the category, you know, because I think we act as if... 
I guess the, even the category in itself to me is set aside to affirm people in the LGBTQ community. This this series wasn't affirming people in the community, right? Because I think to act like when you see a gay character, it has to go in that bucket. There's gay characters in life. That's how life works. We're, we're a part of the community. We're not just mm -hmm. this person that you bring out in costume. Like mm -hmm. we're actual people. And so yeah. I think to act as if because there's gay characters, period, is now a black or now a gay or now a this, it doesn't make sense to me personally. Mm -hmm. I don't agree. And I get that and I appreciate that. And I just want to make clear as well, also for educational purposes, I'm not asking Obio these questions because I think he has the standard response Facts. for all gay individuals but as someone who's not a, as a part of the community i'm educating myself by asking someone for their perspective so don't go around practicing asking your gay friends to speak for all gay people because we hate when you do that shit. <laughs> i just want to say that to the camera <laughs> i think what's clear here is that this show was instrumental in highlighting the intersections of race and class that leave out leave the most undesirable the most vulnerable and i just wonder how are these topics how do you engage these topics in your space create space if at all and if not what do you focus most on when it comes to affirming people with queer identities yeah i focus on being yourself mm -hmm. right and i think like we think about being ourselves as this like i'm gonna wear this thing i'm going to do my hair this way i'm gonna hang out with these people but like the action of literally being yourself. People outside of the community are very pervasive in this idea that being yourself is the opposite end of this proclamation, this opposite end of this declaration that says, I'm gay or I'm bi or I'm trans. But I think I, my platform really, really invites the idea of just simply being yourself, mm -hmm. like finding your language. If someone's handling you in a way that you are not, correcting them but just literally being yourself, right? And I think in being yourself, you find yourself aligning with the things that are for you. But it's hard because to be yourself, and this isn't really exclusive to gay people, now that I think about it, but being yourself, you have to unlearn a lot of systems at play that have suppressed who you could have been, mm, right? And yeah. so like, and that you have to undo the language that says, even for myself, when I was younger, I'm, I'm not gonna go on a tangent, but when I was okay. younger, <laughs> people would always say like, don't say you're gay. You're talented, you're attractive, mm -hmm. never say you're gay. Like that's yeah. gonna be the end of you. And here I am talking to you saying I'm gay, right? But it's like this thing that we have to unlearn. You know what I mean? So I think in all in all, like my work is to really invite people to love on yourself, free yourself, liberate yourself, and work to liberate the community you find yourselves in. I love that. I ate that, Loki. You did. You did. That was fantastic. You were practicing? No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's the this. <laughs> nah, okay, but we love that. So what's T? So you can find me on YouTube every Wednesday at noon. I have a series called It's Just Not Adding Up. We talk about every queer microaggression you can think about. Um, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Obio O Jones. My website is obiojones.com. You can get some merch. You can book a life coaching session. And honestly, I'm just I'm just journeying, you yeah. know. So what's next is in the air. It's in God's hands. We're gonna see what happens. I love that for you. I love that for you. So please subscribe to my friend's YouTube channel. Please do that. I am always happy to have conversation with you. I Likewise. love having you. You're fantastic. This is a great conversation. I'm I'm fighting with the urge to just post the whole thing online so people can see the whole thing. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how you get it. We'll see how you get it in stages, whatever, what have you. But please. Make sure, if you're on YouTube, subscribe. You're missing out if you're not on Patreon to see the full situation of what's going on here. All my Patreon subscribers, show my boy Obio some love, and we're out. Peace.